I gotta get a couple of these. A couple of statues? Hmm, not exactly. The chest turns out to be nothing more than a block of styrofoam, merely painted to resemble a chest. But as you are examining it, it tips forward, and under it you find... nothing. However, hidden between the chest and the wall, you find... nothing. But then, you examine the back of the chest, and you find... nothing. Damn! That Allo has no respect whatsoever for adventure game cliches. How festive! The natives decorate their staterooms with boats. Doomy's bottle of orgasmic powder is either half empty or... No, it's definitely half empty. Too cheap for vases, the cruise line bought plastic flowers with fish-shaped stems. Peggy is the ship's surly, foul-mouthed deckhand, heavily affected by a childhood spent watching. Oh boy, another beaver joke. Let's see, have you heard the one about the two beavers who went bike riding? Oh, not again. Oh, you've heard it. Every fine ship has plants carved into the shape of animals. But a beast? Uh, hi, Miss Peggy. I'm back. Well, look at you! Mr. High f in Fashion! You've got to admit, not many women are daring enough to go for that beard stubble look. So, um, where can I find a cabin boy, Peggy? You stupid son of a b Don't you know you can never find a god cabin boy when you need him? Sh I go looking for one near every night, right before bed, and do I find one? Hell no! Well, um, my needs are a bit simpler. Um, I just want a favor. Well, there is one sneaky-ass little foreign mother always hiding out down there in the employee's break room. Name of X squats or something like that, I don't know. Uh, why don't you try looking there? Thanks, Peggy. Good recommendation. I will. Peggy, I I've been in that employee's break room and, um, I didn't see a soul. It was completely deserted, as if no one works on this ship. <laughs> Nobody does but me. I have to do everything around here. Peggy, swab the decks. Peggy, weld the railing. Peggy, hose off the captain's rubber sheets. Shit. Ain't nobody works like I do. Um, very impressive <clears throat> and colorful. But, um, where's Exquisite's, um, he, he, if he's not in that break room? Oh, the sneaky little bird's probably hiding behind the locker bay. Did you look in there? Which locker is Kizowitz in? Who am I? Ran f***ing McNally? Find your own way, Columbus! But you can bet it opens from the bottom, cause he's such a tiny little p I know I'll regret this, but, um, could you be a little more specific? Sh Did your mother have any children that lived? Second locker, bottom row, now beat it! And I don't mean your little weed whacker, either. I can't read that. Al, what are you asking me to do here? I, I can't. I have, I have standards. I'm a professional spokesperson. I happen to be the voice of the Allied car dealers of Banning. I 
I can't get Susie Q's locker open. Do you know the combination? Sure, kid. Why did you ask me sooner? 38, 24, 36. Seems so obvious. I'll see you around, Miss Peggy. It's been my f***ing pleasure, you p***. Hey, this Jake, would be Mr. a perfect Martino. time to test your CyberSniff 2000 car. White courtesy phone, please. Hello, who dares to enter my private chambers? Ah, you here for dirty pictures? Huh? Oh, um, excuse me. I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you make me laugh, you big zero. Big zero? Oh, well, yeah, that is my cabin number. Listen, I, I, I can't quite read your name tag. Is that, um... Excel Watchikits? Maybe. Maybe not. You here for dirty pictures? Uh, no. No. <laughs> um, at least I don't think so. Okay, whatever. You're the boss. Hunky dunky dory wall. That must be one of Exquisites' ancestors. Pictures of Captain Thigh are sprinkled around the ship to inspire the contestants. Mm, I know I'm inspired. That's a relic from a rare African tribe of warrior brothers. Looks more like the Warner Brothers. Hmm, you could be right. You haven't seen one of these since you went to India with the Beatles to visit the Maharishi. Funny. I don't remember that. Hardly surprising. These lamps reflect Zixwurst's life philosophy. Hang around long enough and you may become enlightened. You got your fill of these on your old Enoch Light provocative percussion albums. What the hell is in that jar? Hmm, it's either a miniature version of those Easter Island heads, or a bust of Al Lowe. It's more comfortable than it looks. That wouldn't be difficult. Either Zawigs is an eclectic collector, or his family heritage is a multicultural jumble. His little hiding place is awash with cultural references.
That large air vent must help Ziegenfuss keep his cool. That large air vent must help Ziegenfuss keep his cool. Um, do you know where I could obtain some, well, photographs? You know, the, uh, <clears throat> good kind? Wink, wink. <laughs> ah, Mr. Leaf Blower wants to buy some filthy pictures, huh? Oh, no, I, I have no interest in pornography. I'm an artist. Oh, yes, artist, me too. And these are very special. Oh, uh, how's that? Why, they are pictures of you. Wow, what? Are you a cabin boy on the ship, or aren't you? Yes. No. Perhaps. Hmm, not clear. Hmm, it seems as if you might be unsure. Well, since I saw movie Cabin Boy, I branch out into new work. Ugh, stinker. <laughs> hey, him all over ship. Keep eye out. So, experts, how about cleaning my cabin? It's a mess. I could do that. Um, forget it. What? Aren't you a cabin boy? Actually, from now on you will please refer to me as individual accoutrement maintenance young person. Or I am Yip, for short. See, boss? No more manual labor. Why? <laughs> Why? Who gonna fire a guy with filthy pictures? You don't mean blackmail? <gasps> no, 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 no. Wash out your mouth. Everyone buy for personal portfolio. Hmm? Keepsake, memorabilia, good stuff. Use good film, good camera, good angles. Hasselblad, medium format, 90 millimeter lens. Blows up, real nice. Good for over sofa, even better for over bed. Um... Ah... Oh, no. Ooh, oh! Why... Wow! What? Say, how did you get photographs of me like this? Oh, it's no problem, really. Fast film. Very fast. Well, I suppose I should buy some pictures from you. <laughs> Can you... Um... Charger to my room? Okay, the doke, whatever you are saying. Uh, Zitzku, do you know Miss Peggy, that deckhand? Ooh, Peggy, sure, know Peggy very well. Know her since she was just Peg. Good customer, very good. Go through plenty of dirty pics. Ask her, go ahead, ask. She say I one straight guy. So, uh, Susie Q, do you take care of Drew Barrymore's cabin? Yes. No. Maybe. Not help you, anyway. How about some fine silver, huh? Very heavy plate. Thanks, but, um, I'm trying to find her clothes. I think you know where her suitcase is. Oh, 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 I know. Believe me, I know. But too busy to help you. Bye, Joey. That large air vent must help Ziegenfuss keep his cool. Yeah, bye-bye, Exy. Hasta la vista, Potsala. Your attention, please. Jen has just won the Strip Shuffleboard Tournament. Uh, hi, Miss Peggy. I'm back. Well, look at you. Mr. High f in Fashion. So, uh, Miss Peggy, uh, would you tell me about Zekowitzy Q? Cheap f***ing foreign b***h. 
All his kind wants to do is take jobs away from us real Americans. Miss Peggy, when was the last time you even saw America? 1973. And what's it to you, you little dead? Ever regret asking a question? Course the J-off's got one sneaky f***ing hobby. What's Executed's uh, hobby? I that x lax is one perverse little mother f***er. Always sneaking around the f***ing ship's secret passageways, spying on the f***ing paying customers, that little bird. Is that legal? You mean is he legal? Hell no! <laughs> Oh, but that don't stop a little from doing it, does it now? I'd like to know what he does with all the film he shoots. A blackmail would be my guess. Or maybe the alt dot pervert news group. Is there anything Kuzowitzikse needs? I mean, something I could give him to gain his favor? Arg! I don't know if he needs anything, but I know what he wants. And it sure ain't a whiff of my crabby p is there anything Stuby Quetzy Watts wants? Simple minded little piece of shit. Can't you figure anything out? He wants to get into the US of A, alright? But he ain't got no fing chance, schmuck, cause he ain't got no fing passport! Passport, huh? Well, that shouldn't be so hard to find on a cruise ship. You are one dumb son of a b, ain't ya? Don't you remember what happened to all the passports when you came aboard? Oh, no. Probably you were too busy sniffing them fine young officers, wasn't ya? I'll see you around, Miss Peggy. It's been my f***ing pleasure, ya p***. Hey, mister. Want to sell some filthy pictures? Judging from your reaction to this stuff, a little goes a long way. Must be some sort of psyche afro -delidisiac. Far out. the ship's purser, resides behind this counter, ever eager for another opportunity to do whatever he can to help his passengers. Isn't that just about the worst thing you've ever seen? When Lefty plays piano, it sounds like a jazz combo. worried about the charges on my account. Could you check my balance for me? Of course. Wait here. I'll be right back. The purser's desk has a beautiful aquarium built into it. Your account is next to nothing. Only $19,123. Bowling balls may not be removed from the bowling competition area. May I use your telephone? No. This telephone is for official purser's desk business only. You must use the telephone on that pole over there. Where can I find a cabin boy? 
I don't know where the cabin boys go. Maybe one of the other employees knows. So stop bugging me with your personal problems. I'm only here to serve our passengers. But I am a passenger. See, there you go again. I'd like my passport, please. I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Impossible. <laughs> Absolutely impossible. Nope, not allowed. What do you mean, not allowed? Why not? It's my passport. I should be able to get my passport at any time. Ooh, Mr. Big Tough Guy. Don't beat me, please. Well, on second thought, you can go ahead and beat me. Okay, I don't care. You can have it back. Just show me your identification. My passport is my identification. I must see some form of photographic identification or no passport day. Those are my rules. You're making this up as you go along, right? Sorry. No photo ID, no passport. Let me see if I understand this. To get back my photo ID, I have to show you my photo ID. Don't bother me with details. I'd like to talk to you about one of your employees. Yes, sir. I have nothing to do of importance. Why don't you just waste my time berating the innocent help? You see, it's that Peggy woman, that deckhand upstairs. Oh, oh, her. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I'll talk to her. We've had quite a few complaints. I was only wondering if she was, um, really a pirate? Never you mind, sir. I'll give her a severe tongue lashing right away. Now, that's an ugly picture. I'd like to complain about my room. <laughs> you and everyone else. You're lucky you have a room. It's weirdos like you that spoil everything for the rest of us normal folks. Hey, back off, bucko. Yes, that is my favorite position. And while you think you're big stuff now, you just wait until we're in charge. Then you'll be singing a different tune. Then you'll be glad to even have a room. What in the hell is wrong with you? Oh, I think you know well enough. The CIA put mind control drugs in Pew's house paint, and now all the interior decorators are under their control. I can't stand it! I'm looking for that cabin boy, ex uh, or whatever his name is. Oh, sure. I'll leave him a note. He'll get to it. <laughs> Never. Is there anywhere aboard ship where I could get a photo ID made? Right. Like, I'm gonna help you steal poor Mr. Laffer's passport, uh-huh. But I am Mr. Laffer. That's yet to be proven, hunky. Oh. Good job. Now the photos of you are not only dirty, they're sticky. Good idea. Yeah, but first I'm going to tear off some of this groinal area. You've created what may well be the world's first pornographic photo ID. Yeah, I kind of like it. Figures. The white courtesy zones are for loading and unloading only. I'd like my passport, please. What for? You have no need for it here aboard ship. Look, here's my photo ID. That's what you said you needed, right? Now be a nice little puckered pandering purser and procure my passport pronto! Yes, sir, bitch. Here you are. Do not lose it. There are many nefarious types roaming this ship. <laughs> All of them mooching ill-gotten booty such as this from our unsuspecting guileless guests. I doubt that. You're just paranoid. Oh, muchisimos gracias, senor. We ranking officers can never get enough insults from lowly passenger scum. Okay, see you around. And just what do you mean by that? Your attention, please. 
Dodd has the white just courtesy telephone is here for the convenience of the, of the passengers. Perther's desk. Hello, could you page someone for me? Uh, all right. The party? Miss Hug and Kiss? We have no one aboard by that name. First name, Amanda? Oh, I hate that. Perther's desk, where we have absolutely nothing to do, and we do it religiously. <laughs> Hello? Yes, um... Do you have Prince Albert in a can? No, we don't. Well, let him out. <laughs> oh. Perther's desk, it's your quarter. Could you page someone for me? If I must, the name? Mr. Mawini. I'm sorry, we have no one aboard by that name. First name of Adolf? Huh, ruined a good joke. Perther's desk. Yes, hello. Could you page someone for me? If I must. The party? Mr. Butts. Nice try, sweetie. His first name is Seymour. Oh. Perther's desk. Is your refrigerator running? No, the ship cools everything with iceberg chips. Well, why don't you... Perther's desk. Yeah, hi there. Um, is there a bowling alley aboard the ship? Of course there is. This is the luxury liner. Oh. Do you have luxurious 10-pound balls? Of course, and I also have an upright pin. Yeah, well, how can you walk straight? Oh. Horseshoes may now be removed from the horseshoe competition area. Hey there, Jehoitz. Ah, uh, same right at you, Mr. Loaf in the Pants. So, um, do you enjoy traveling, Zippy Wits? Enjoy? Yes, very much. Love to travel. But someday want to settle down. Oh, really? Where? Where? U.S. of A. Where else? Love Fresno suburbs. <laughs> Want big Volvo, crabgrass, satellite dish. Ah, yes, she speaks truth. Need to see passports so can make copy. Any country. U.S. Very, very good. Where yours? Oh, it's around. Your passport reminds you of your many exciting travels in Leisure Suit Larry's 1 through 6. Available in Sierra's exciting Leisure Suit Larry's greatest hits and misses. Now, if those damn custom agents would stop drawing little mustaches on your picture. I know how much you want to travel, zippity doo -dah. I'm a kind of a world traveler myself. In fact, I have my passport with me right now. What? You have passport? <gasps> Never see American passport. Show me passport, let me see. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Damn, where'd he go? Your attention, please. 
Bob has just won the nude pole vaulting portion of the competition. This key gets the cabin boy into all the secret fun custodial closets and storage holes on the ship. Good idea. You may as well get something in trade for your passport. That must be one of Exquisiz's ancestors. I want it all. Perfect. It's some kind of sticky substance. Boy, these guys I sure know how to party. I take another. <laughs> Are you sure you want to lick that, Larry? Hmm. On second thought, hey, baby, don't answer. Take a bite of the Tastes dish. a little like chicken. Wow. Do I look hot or what? Oh, that's great. Oh, this is perfect. Hey, I don't want to be left out of this. Okay, girls, who wants me first? Don't all come at once. <laughs> That's a little joke on me. What the hell did you say? Hey, turn on the lights. <laughs> Blind dessert taste test. Oh, <laughs> that was close. It's nice to see the site challenged having a good time. <laughs> Idiot. Fool. Miniaturist. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this time I've got to make it without running into somebody. I can't be that unlucky. Oh, wouldn't I love a bite of that. Larry, so nice you could drop by and dressed for the occasion. Whoa, who's this? <clears throat> Gotta play it cool. Uh, yes, I uh, always like to be, uh, well, uh, dressed <clears throat> in, in, in things. Rats. What a sound. I've got a problem, Larry. The old man. Oh, that old guy in the wheelchair? Hmm, she must be his nurse. Yes, exactly. I'm tired, Larry. I got into this for a reason, to become a rich widow. But I'm so tired of waiting. You get me? She loves nursing, but she doesn't have enough time for sex. Oh, I gotcha. I thought it would be easy. He looks like he's ready to keel over any second. But he saves up his strength till we're back in the cabin. And then he wears me out. I've had my fill of boning that old coat. The constant pressure. The endless pounding. Oh, a physical therapist, too. I wonder if it's true what they say about physical therapists. I see your problem and... And I'm your solution. This is easier than I thought. So you're willing to do the dirty deed? This is easier than I thought. Hey, sweetheart. I'm always willing to help a dame in need. What a putz. Yes. Help. I'll make it worth your while. How about a little sample? Right now. Sample? More like a taste of things to come. <laughs> oh!
come by my cabin late tonight, and we'll work out the kinks. I'll lay out my plan. He'll do the killing. I'll get off scot-free. Sounds great! When can you fit me in? Uh... Wait! What cabin? What's your name? Your mystery date seems to have dropped her hanky. Captain Queek's balls, please return them to the ballroom. Your mystery date seems to have dropped her hanky. This lacy silk handkerchief embroidered with the initials AB emits a faint odor. It smells faintly of gardenias with hints of rose water and intrigue. The ballroom is locked, but there's a note hanging on the door. Cher Larry, after changing the course of world fashion, I'm off to do the late night talk show, Sergeant. I'm sure you'll derive great satisfaction from knowing you played a tiny part in moi's greatness. If you are ever in Manhattan or Paris, Feel free to buy some of my clothes. Yours truly, Jamie. Gee. Once champagne imported all the way from the San Joaquin Valley trickled its way up over and down enough glasses to sink a Lexus. Now, budget cutbacks demand barely enough water to fill the spa. Pretty clever of the ship's designers, disguising the engine's exhaust pipes to look like a monster truck's... exhaust pipes. Well, not too clever. Pretty clever of the ship's designers, disguising the engine's air intakes as a giant champagne bucket complete with bottle. You'd do anything to hear another bush joke, wouldn't you? Uh, hiya girls. My name's Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? Laffer? Well, that's a funny little old name. I'll bet you're a funny little old fella, too. Well, gee. <clears throat> I guess so. <laughs> um, say, don't I know you? Oh, probably. Yeah, you're famous, aren't you? We're the Jugs. My name's Naomi. And this here's my daughter. Why don't you? So, you ever heard our records, Larry? This Jugs for you. The Jugs are every bit as natural as their hair. Now there's a body that's paid its dues in haystacks. Lucky Bubbles. They look so much alike they could be mother and daughter. You pray that do isn't flammable. They look so much alike, they could be mother and daughter. Better coiffures through chemistry. So, why are a couple of famous singers like you taking a cruise? Well, to be honest, Larry, fame can be a curse as well as a blessing. 
All that touring was just a wearing us out. Not to mention the fact that we can't show our faces in public again until the heat's off. Why don't you hush your mouth? Now, well, um, let's see. I've, uh, kind of forgotten. Which of you is the mother and which is the daughter? Oh, shucks, Larry. Ain't you the little flatterer? I'm why don't you's mama, don't you know? Of course, we are dang near the same age. I had her on my first ovulation. Heck yeah, I'm 19, and Mama's been 29 for at least five years. Why don't you? You are not funny. I notice you both have really large, um, hairstyles. <laughs> yeah, you like them? Well, they're sure, uh, big. How do you get them that way? Now, Larry, that's a little old showbiz secret. To get it really big, I like to hang upside down. Why don't you stop? And to keep the hairspray from sticking to your outfit, you just about gotta be buck naked. That's about enough, why don't you? That's actually too much, but uh, thanks for sharing. Anytime. So, um, what kind of music do you sing? Both kinds. Country and Western. Ass kicking country Western. Why don't you? We don't use that kind of language no more. Sorry, Mama. Butt kicking. Now, see, was that so hard? You probably know our big hit. Big hair and tangled limbs. Uh, well, it, it doesn't ring a bell. What about, I got my panties round my ankles and pain round my heart? You know that one, don't you? Uh, it sure sounds like a Grammy winner. Oh, honey, it is. It is. When we finish that, there ain't a dry eye in the house. So just what kind of music do you listen to, anyway? Disco. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk. You know, some folks say it's coming back. Well, I don't. But, see, I say it never left. You are a funny little fella. Hi, my name's Bill Gates. Ah, couldn't be. You're too geeky. Slam Dunk Score. You two must be performing here on the cruise. We weren't gonna at first. See, we're on vacation, don't you know? Yeah, we was just wanting a break from the pressures of fame. But our manager insists we keep our act tight. So we decided to do one special show for the fans, don't you know? God love them. Oh, yeah? Smell this. What do you mean, till the heat's off? Oh, there was an unpleasant little incident about a month ago. We was doing a benefit at a maximum security women's correctional facility. We was trying to give our poor sisters a chance to forget their troubles. It's always for the fans. Don't you know that? And our manager said it'd be a cheap way to shoot our new cable special, Caged Heat, Jugs Behind Bars. Why don't you? Who's telling the story anyway? Anyway, turns out that day we had a little trouble of fitting into our spandex costumes. See, Mama had been hitting them tour bus donuts again. Why don't you shush? Anyhow, you know, the show must go on. So I just had one of our roadies spray us down with some silicone lubricant. And we just slid right in. Hmm. Well, now there's an interesting image. Anyhow, we had no idea those hot stage lights would trigger a chemical reaction between the spandex and that silicone lubricant. Hoo-hoo-wee! That was something. It did cause a commotion. Oh, yeah. So, what happened? It's all kind of just a blur now. Let's just say after that, if we're where we went, we was accosted by tabloid photographers. <laughs> we was mobbed. And once they aired that videotape on a Nashville affair, well, we just had to lay low for a while. So, here we are, just a soaking up some rays and a kicking back. Do you have any recordings I could listen to? You know, I'd love to give you an autographed copy of our latest CD. This jug's for you. But we left for this cruise in such a hurry, we only had time to grab a few lacy nothings off in the bus. Oh, that's okay. I far prefer the superior fidelity of A-Track. Say, <laughs> you are a funny little feller. So why do you wear spandex outfits if it caused you so much grief? For the fans, don't you know? Yep, it's always for the fans. 
And because its mild corseting action keeps mama out of them full figured sizes. Why don't you? That'll be enough. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. Be sure you catch our show in the lounge tonight. Y'all come back now, here. Your attention, please. Al has just finished the flatulence portion of the competition. EDEC will reopen in 15 minutes. Yeah, baby! No, not Fifi! These fish must not be very good. Oh, uh, why? They're working with a net. Adds a new dimension to last night's swordfish dinner, eh, Larry? Mm. Yeah. The Caviar Master 2000 is for those who like their eggs fishy yet fresh. Apparently, these fish were on the wrong side in the seafood revolution. The Cyber Cheese 2000. Just add ingredients and step way back. Ugh. Nice pot. Reminds me of my college days. The judge gave me six months probation. This shaker contains only genuine sea salt, scraped from the hull of the ship before its annual hosing down. Pass the salt. That's not funny. Okay, you try making the jokes all the time. It's a fish wrapped in an old issue of Professional Hash Slinger magazine. Oh, good. My subscription just ran out. That fish has gone bad. How can you tell? Oh, the little things. The earring, the tattoo, the surly expression. Say, how about if I toss the fish and keep the magazine it's wrapped in? That's good. This would be handy if you ever need to pass the pot, Larry. That's good, because when I grew up, we were so poor, we never had a pot to pass in. <laughs> a pot to pass in, see, it's a little... <clears throat> it's salt, for Christ's sake, man. It's salt, for Christ's sake, man. It's just salt. Do I have to describe everything for you? What are you looking for, a secret button that turns it into a letter opener or something? Do you think I have nothing better to do than sit here in this stuffy recording studio booth and read the names of things to the likes of you? What? I do? Somebody get my agent on the phone. Someone used this page from Professional Hash Slinger magazine to wrap old fish. Well, shouldn't that be a job for Professional Fish Wrapper magazine? Blackjack contestants, report to the casino immediately. There are tables available. This magazine page smells like fish. Probably because it was once wrapped around one. This page contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese. The ingredients include beaver milk, as always, milk from the elusive Venezuelan beaver is much preferred, a pinch of salt, rennet, for which lime juice may be substituted in a pinch, and a hint of mold. Now for the details of preparation. Hey! 
You made a subiism. What? A subiism. You know, when you choose a word based on previous words. Okay, like you use the cliche in a pinch because you just finished saying the phrase pinch of salt. Get it? Damn, you're weird, Larry. Anyhow, there's more on the back of the page. Oh, you mean I have to click again just to hear the back? Oh, stop your whining. Here, the back contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese and kumquat quiche. The ingredients include beaver cheese and a sliced kumquat. You probably don't want to hear the rest of this either, do you? This page contains the recipe for Venezuelan beef. Hey, you made a subiism. What? A subiism. Damn. Oh, you mean I have to click again just. Oh. Hey, hold it! What do you think you're doing? You can't go in there. That's private. Why, them women could be naked in there, and the, the breast is just swinging back and forth with the, the nipple thing, and they could be hanging upside down again, and well, you just don't know. Oh, sorry. I was just looking for the head. Don't you talk that nautical talk to me, bub. I'm just a plain old country boy. Hey, Johnson, it's me, Larry, <laughs> Larry Laffer. Hey, man, nice threads. Uh, excuse me, Johnson, I want a glass of lime juice. No. Why not? We don't serve just lime juice. And why not? Because it ain't on the menu. Oh, it ain't, ain't it? Nope, and if it ain't on the menu, I ain't serving it. Well then, how about you make me a Lime Ricky, Johnson? Is that on your menu? Yeah. Okay. One Lime Ricky, coming up. But leave out the gin, okay? Okay. Virgin. And leave out the soda water, okay? Okay. And leave out the sugar, okay? Okay. And leave out the friggin' ice, okay? Why, you? And make it snappy. Here, bugger up. Oh, uh, Johnson? I want a gigantic erection. Well, talk to the captain, not me. No, I mean a drink. A cocktail. Oh, well, that'll take a while. Are you sure? Oh, I'll, I'll wait. No problem. Your attention, please. All contestants, be sure to complete the social disease pretest on your scorecard. Yeah, baby! The jugs left a can of spray deodorant on their dressing table. Now that's a can of hairspray. Obviously the jugs have more clothes than you've seen them wear. The jugs have many styles of shoes, all of them boots. Each of their songs is on a separate disc. One disc is titled, You Got Into My Bra, But Not Into My Heart. That's not a mirror, just a shadowy reflection of one.
sneaky idea. The jugs will never notice. The two cans look almost identical. The Jugs have a karaoke stereo system with a collection of all their hit records backup tracks. They use it for practice as well as for some of these small time gigs. That way they needn't be bothered with hiring live musicians. Boy, does that suck. This button is unmarked. You'd better not push it. You have no idea what would happen. What a surprise. You pushed an unmarked button. You hope nothing bad happens. Oh, got away with another one. Hey, loser. You want this drink you ordered? I'll charge it to your room. Thanks. Hey, my banana's all soft and flaccid with little brown spots. Sorry, bud. I only do drinks. This is the follow spot used for stage shows. Hmm, let me just ease this. Oops. The tiny lettering on the bulb reads Cyberlamp 2000 Long Distance Heat Lamp. 2,500 watts, guaranteed range 200 yards, not to be used in unapproved fixtures. Tonight, a spectacular display of audio animatronics in the proud little seaman lounge. Don't miss your chance to see great moments with Mr. Clinton in the lounge nightly. That's a sneaky idea. The bulb fits, it's the right voltage, but won't it make the stage uncomfortably warm? Hey Johnson, it's me, Larry, <laughs> Larry Laffer. Hey man, nice threads. Oh, uh, Johnson? I want a gigantic... We'll talk to the captain. No. Oh, well... Oh. Hey, loser. You want this drink you ordered? I'll charge it to your room. Thanks. Hey. My banana's all soft and flaccid with little brown spots. Sorry, bud. I only do drinks. volunteer for the unplug part of our set. Who wants to play with our jugs? Wow! <laughs> Why, looky here, Mama, a volunteer. Howdy, buckaroo. Pardon us while we whip these out. <gasps> hey, Johnson, how about some of that special lighting? Whew. 
Why don't you, honey? Is it hot in here? Oh, Mama, I'm a-getting that feeling again. Grab him. into somebody this time. You love the feel of a good beaver, don't you, Larry? Your attention, please. Lane has just won the nude blindfolded tattooing competition. The jugs must have lost the electric chase lights from their clothing in the frenzy of our passionate lovemaking. Either that, or their batteries run down. What are you going to do with those? Quite a theme they've got going here, isn't it? There's Dildo. That's the remote control the sound engineer uses to turn on and off the jug's electric clothing. There's a remote possibility you could use that. The jug's costumes were decorated with strings of battery-powered chase lights. Everything seems intact, but there doesn't seem to be any way to turn them on. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. It's the official state deodorant of Texas. Smokin' pits with the smell of down-home barbecue. If you had some sugar and water, you could use this lime juice to make limeade. But. I don't like limeade. Good thing you enjoy looking at it, then. This looks suspiciously like a remote control. But to remotely control what? Cool. Yes, the remote does control the chase lights. But now what? You haven't seen a mixer like this since you ran sound for that rock band back in high school. Well, what's this? The sound man left his earplugs lying under the mixer.
Hey, Johnson, it's me, Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Hey, man. Nice threads. Oh, uh... We'll talk... No. Oh. Oh. Come on in, honey. Oh, mama, not again. Yee-haw! Hey, loser. You want this drink you ordered? I'll charge it to your room. Thanks. Hey. My banana's all soft and flaccid with little brown spots. Sorry, bud. I only do drinks. Your attention, please. Would the winner of last week's Pleasing the Captain competition please report to the infirmary at this time? Your test results are in. Yeah, baby! Insert your Thiesman Trophy scorecard into this slot whenever you're ready to compete. This fiberglass centaur hides the Thiesman Trophy card reader. Simply insert your scorecard in his slot to begin. The system verifies your eligibility with the ship's central competition computer, then automatically scores and tabulates your efforts. Pretty doggone impressive. Especially considering it's still running on a Commodore 64. Be careful not to walk there when someone is throwing horseshoes. Why not just quit? You suck. Do not exit the horseshoe area without removing your scorecard from the horse's ass. You horse's ass. I hope that's my card. The only reason you want to feel that is because you expect to hear something about long and hard, right? Sorry! Watch out! Whoever 
removed random message 22. Please report to security immediately. Congratulations, another ringer. Your attention, please. Larry Lapper has just won the horseshoe tossing portion of the competition with a record high perfect score of 100 points. Congratulations, Larry. You really stuck it to him. Ugh. I hope that's my card. Yeah, baby! Why would they decorate the bowling alley with a fiberglass walrus? You know, the other contestants wiped their balls first. Mm. How bizarre. The ship's bowling lanes lead right off the stern. You bet they probably go through a lot of balls. Nice throw, Wimp. He seems to be better than you. Not here. There aren't quite enough people watching you yet. Many of the upper class passengers are enjoying a delicious buffet meal right now. Cybersmith 2000. There's a sheaf of folded papers here. Professional audio engineers always use earplugs when working around high sound pressure levels to ensure their hearing remains sensitive and accurate. Ugh, I don't want those. They'll be all waxy. No, these are unused. This life insurance policy in the amount of one billion dollars is on one Aristotle K. Boning with the beneficiary listed as Annette B. Boning. It emits a very faint smell.
I'm interested in boning. I'm your boy. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I want to find out about a passenger named Boning. Damn. I never give out information to the public, even boning ones. Bowling balls may not be removed from the bowling competition area. Purser's desk, what do you want? Yes, may I please have the boning cabin? Connecting. Hello? Are you boning? We were, till this damn phone rang. Purser's desk, now what? May I please have the boning cabin? Connecting. Hello? Hello, may I speak with the lady of the cabin? Look, Sonny. You either stop calling, or I'll have your ass thrown overboard! Horseshoes may now be removed from the horseshoe competition area. I'm a little worried about the charges on my account. Could you check my balance for me? Of course. Wait here, I'll be right back. This button displays the last number dialed on the telephone's liquid crystal display. Good idea. Go oil? Yeah, that's real helpful. What in the hell good does that do me? Larry, the phone's upside down. And your point is? That 71009. The Boning's phone number is 71009. I knew that. The 7 indicates a guest room on this ship. 1009 is their room number. Huh. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that could be helpful. Horseshoes may not be removed from the horseshoe competition area. Your account is next to nothing. Only $19,123. Attention, please. There are no brass urinals aboard this ship. The baritone saxophone player is not amused. The maids are rather fetching, but those guys remind you of the bullies who used to kick sand in your face at the beach. What do you mean, used to? Oh, sorry. It appears Annette has left her door unlocked for you. Alrighty, now we're getting somewhere. There's not a lot of light in here, but there appears to be one absolutely luscious body lying there on the bed, in the darkness, waiting for you. It smells faintly of gardenias, with hints of rose water and intrigue. It feels like a bed. Okay, baby, this is it. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Annette?
Larry, what are you doing? You weren't supposed to kill him yet. I... Uh, I thought you were... Safely asleep next door? Yes, it's all becoming clear to me now. A heart attack, no evidence, very neat. But now I'm the Patsy. Jeez, the old guy's one sound sleeper. Hey, maybe we should go to your room and let this old geezer rest in peace, huh? Oh, I think this is exactly where you want to be. Oh, no! She thinks I'm a homosexual! No, no, it's not like that at all. Drop the dumb act, pal. You had this planned all along. But when does the other shoe drop? What's his game? Annette, you don't think I'm a homosexual? Oh yeah, I do think. You cold-hearted bastard. I guess we'll do it your way. Let's get this stuff out of here. Hey, my clothes! Does he want evidence lying around? I think you'd better leave now, before you help me even more. Ah, oh, hell, I don't even care anymore. Let him come. Take a look. Take a gander. See what you want. Oh, two for a nickel. Mommy, why is that funny man wearing a diaper? It's locked. You just love to touch, touch, touch. Your attention, please. Bill has just won the all-night disco marathon competition. Damn! That's one where... If that's what you're looking for, Larry, you've bought the wrong game. They're just out of reach. Yeah, where's a stepladder when you need one? A tasteful gold nameplate above the button says, Boning. Yes? Oh, it's you. Uh-oh. It's good to see you again. Um, well, I was just kind of wondering if there's any way I could get you in bed. If we could, um, talk. I'm not sure what we have to talk about. So, uh, baby, what's your sign? Octagonal. Huh? As in, stop. You know, um, about the other night, um, uh, well, I just wanted to, um, convince you I'm not gay. <laughs> Personally. Look, you did what you had to do, but I don't want to talk about it, okay? But I, well, <laughs> oh, all right. I haven't seen your old friend around lately. Is everything okay? Yes, everything's fine. Here it comes. I hope he's having a nice rest. Gosh, does she have a great body or what? Oh, he's resting comfortably. So it's blackmail. Annette, I have a knife. Oh! Wait, come back. I wasn't threatening you. I was just wondering what I was supposed to do with this knife.
Yes? Oh, you again. Stop bugging me. Yeah, I'm still around. Yeah, I'm still horny. I have something I believe you want. Oh, that damn insurance policy. Now it's gonna cost me big time. Why, yes. I believe that is mine. Thank you for returning it. Um, I was thinking, you know, um, well, for something as special as this, don't you think, well, you know, a little extra thanks would be in order? <laughs> like sex? Oh. I don't think I have anything you'd want. Oh, I think you have plenty of what I want. Think. Think. How am I gonna get rid of this schmuck? I just don't know. What do you say I come inside? Your vault. All right, Larry. I know what you want. And if I give it to you, I don't want to see you again. You understand? No more. That's it. We're through, capiche? She wants me to have sex right now, and she doesn't want me to call her later. Oh, it's a dream come true. You're reading my mind, sweet cakes. Ugh. Okay. Wait right here. Man, a guy's gotta jump through hoops just to get this chick in bed. Okay, Larry. I don't keep much cash around. But this is worth a lot more than you deserve. Now I'm Scray. Skedaddle. Huh? What's this? Half a billion dollars worth of stock? Oh, but I wanted to get laid. Your attention, please. Lane has just won the spud trucking competition by hoisting a full load. This stock certificate is for five million and one shares of stock in Boneco Transportation. Since the fine print says there are only 10 million shares outstanding, this makes you demand. The handle looks unlocked. You turn the handle and find out that looks can be deceiving. This hopper stores the bowling pins after they've been carved by the beavers in another hole, then sanded by, oh, never mind how they're made. Suffice it to say, these are the bowling pins. Good idea. You slyly open the hopper door and spray the entire can of deodorant all over the bowling pins. Carefully examining the lady's handkerchief saturated with KZ brand sexual lubricant and roulette wheel polish makes you suddenly want to be alone. This isn't the first time you've stuck your fingers in something round, firm, heavy. 
and hard. Oh yeah, I bowled before. Now things ought to happen. This has got to do it. Attention, please. Larry Lapper has just won the bowling portion of the competition with a record high perfect score of 300 points. Congratulations, Larry. You really blew the place apart. And now, the Proud Little Seaman Lounge presents our version of Disney's Mr. Lincoln. Welcome to Great Moments with Mr. Clinton, starring our little audio animatronic answer to the deterioration of respect for the office of the President of the United States, Willie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let me just say this, thank you. I am your president. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute now. I haven't even started the jokes yet. And now, without any further to do, here comes the hilarity. How do you recognize Al Gore when he's surrounded by Secret Service agents? Easy. He's the stiff one. <laughs> now, here's something for you folks to ponder. You know what I say to Hillary right before sex? See you in an hour, honey. Huh, but seriously, folks. <laughs> How do you recognize Al Gore when he's surrounded by Secret Service agents? Easy. He's the stiff one. <laughs> now, here's something for you folks to ponder. You know what I say to Hillary right before sex? See you in an hour, honey. Huh, but seriously, folks. Your attention, please. Mike has just won the evening gown portion of the competition. How will I ever find Drew's suitcase among all these? It'd be like finding a needle in a haystack. <laughs> oh. Ow. The luggage tag on the side of this suitcase reads, Drew Barringmore. Finally, some good luck. Yeah, baby! Evidently, there's a strange collection of characters lying about at the nude pool.
Yeah, baby. Well, sorry, dude. You gotta stop here. Like, duh. What, again? Now what? You. You cannot enter the pool like that. Like what? Like that. You know, carrying a suitcase. Really? And why not? Purser's orders. You might change into your clothes or something. Oh, all right. Can I leave it here? I mean, will you keep an eye on it for me? Dude. Do I look like a check room? I mean, no. Uh, all right. Since it's you, go on, leave it. You want your little buddy again? <laughs> well, I guess. I'm getting kind of used to it. <laughs> Just so long as you don't let it grow attached. <laughs> There are few superlatives that could do justice to the innocent beauty of Drew Barrymore's naked form. How about she's all that and a side of fries? Well, yes, maybe that one. Hi, Drew. It's me, Larry. Oh, hi, Larry. So, what's up, other than the obvious? The palm branch is quite strong. You'll never break it. You can't even move it. Oh, yeah? Put. Drew, I've got your suitcase. Really? I don't see it. The attendant made me leave it in the changing cabana. Come on. But, Larry, this means I'll have to parade completely across the deck, totally, utterly nude, showing everyone here my tan, fit, naked body. I like that. <laughs> hey, Larry, get out of the way. This is all that's left of Drew's gigantic erection. Me too. Do you have a drinking problem? You led a troubled, lonely childhood, didn't you? I've always been very fond of that wonderful German inventor, Anton Fokker. <laughs> have you ever heard of him? Anton Fokker? But of course, I wrote the book on him. So you have heard of him? No, I mean, I literally wrote the book on him. I'm the author of his best-selling biography. It's recognized everywhere as the classic treatise on the subject. I called it Fokker, more than just an airplane. Uh, yeah. Um, I just love discussing historical aircraft designers. Me too. You know, it's funny, Larry. It seems like these cruise ships are filled with phonies who just want to bore me. I could see that. But it's wonderful to find a kindred spirit like you, someone interested in aviation history, particularly the airplanes of my dear sweet Anton. Drew! I've got your suitcase. Really? I don't see it. The attendant made me leave it in the changing cabana. Come on. But Larry, this means I'll have to parade completely across the deck, totally, utterly nude, showing everyone here my tan, fit, naked body. I like that. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, here we are, Drew. It's not much, but uh, it is roomy. Okay, Larry. Just give me a minute to hop in your shower and rinse off the sunscreen, okay? Oh, steam's not the only thing rising. You've gotten Drew this far. Now if you could just get her out of the shower. Get her out of there. Oops. You bastard! That's it. I'm not staying here. And don't you try coming around the pool either. Wait! Hot diggity. That certainly seems to have gone well. Your attention, please. Paging Mr. Hunt. Mr. Mike? Ah, oh, you guys, I'm not gonna fall for that. The steam from Drew's shower has produced a small patch of mold. That's one good-looking beaver. A few days ago, a mighty redwood. Now, a beaver hors d'oeuvre. If you think you're man enough, go ahead. Was it good for you? The Cyber Cheese 2000. Just add ingredients and step way back. The pulsating mold radiates an eldritch glow, reminding you of that monster you left in the back of the fridge so long, it self-actualized and organized a union. It's the milk of beaver kindness. Was it good for you? Let's see, some beaver milk? This mold scraped from my shower wall, a pinch of salt, and this lime juice. And voila! Venezuelan beaver cheese. P.U. That stuff stinks. Cybersmith 2000. The Venezuelan beaver cheese is pale yellow with hints of color marbling its velvety surface. 
kind of like cottage cheese at a July picnic. Cybersmith 2000. Cybersmith 2000. You set the cute little kitchen timer for exactly 55 minutes. Mix the kumquat into your pot of beaver cheese, throw in a few more things you find lying under the kitchen counter, then place the entire mess in a clean baking dish and slam it in the oven. Well, okay, a baking dish. Hey, that doesn't smell half bad. No, it smells all bad. Your attention, please. Carrot has just won the women's topless pogo stick competition. I'm sorry I missed that one. Why did a pig and a python show up now? Artistic license. Why did a pig and a python show up now? Artistic license. Judge Julia has never met a dessert she didn't like, or a quiche, or a souffle, or a whatever. Judge Graham specializes in food for those who want to lower their intake of fat and taste. Judge Paul is obviously fond of food, his own, his competitors, anyone's. A poem. By Larry. <laughs> Larry laughed. I've never seen an electric uvula. I never hope to see one. I can tell you anyhow, I'd rather see than be one. Proudly, you present your concoction for evaluation by the panel of esteemed chefs. The scorecard, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. Laffer. Well, let's see now. to distinguish it from the hundreds of other Venezuelan beaver cheese quiches we've endured. Although the essence of kumquat does help slightly. <laughs> what? I don't even want to bother tasting it then. Wait, I might want to try. No, never mind. One taste of that was enough. Well, a little taste couldn't hurt. It smells awful good. No, it just smells awful. Hmm. 
this ought to spice it up a little. Proudly, you present your special enhanced concoction for evaluation by the panel of esteemed chefs. Um, scorecard, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Laffer. Well, what do we have here? Mmm! I mm. have Yes, well, delightfully. Hey, wait for me. Well, Look at those scores. You just won the cook-off competition. Your attention, please. Larry Lapper has just won the cook-off with a record high score of 300 points. Congratulations, Larry. Everyone wants a copy of that recipe. This is the door to Captain Thigh's personal quarters. Captain Thigh's whiteboard graphically displays the relative progress of the leading contestants in her Thigh's Man trophy race. Your cheating has served you well. Now just don't get caught. It's locked. Maybe if you knocked? Okay, Captain. Prepare to meet your new master. Man, what happened to you? I'm last week's winner. Or what's left of me. Don't go in there. Are you sure you want to continue, Larry? I made it this far. I'm not quitting now.
there's been some terrible error. I was told the winner of my competition was one Larry Laffer. Oh, that's me already. I am so excited about winning the free cruise and spending a week with a beautiful babe like you. Why, there must be some mistake. No, that was never part of the offer. I, I thought, you know, your cabin, a week of and me and... Oh. Captain Thigh is beautiful, spoiled, and oversexed. Yeah, it's like I died and went to heaven. Captain Thigh has a face which did launch a thousand ships. How I'd love to dock my skin boat in that harbor. But I won the contest, fair and... <clears throat> Well, I won the contests. Yes, I know. Well, the cruise part is no problem. I'm sure your room is available next week. But... And I know that the winner is supposed to spend a week with me, but I'm filled with ennui. What do you mean, ennui? Ennui. Oh, it's difficult to explain. Ennui. Noun. Listlessness and dissatisfaction resulting from lack of interest, boredom, French, from the old French ennuyé, to annoy, to bore, from the vulgar Latin. To quote John Barth, the servants relieved their ennui with gambling and gossip about their masters. Who the hell is that? I don't know, but I hear him all the time. But how can you change the rules now? I thought I'd won the game. After seeing you, Larry Laffer, suddenly I expect something more. And besides, I always say a man should give before he gets. So, what do you really want out of life, Captain? Oh, I don't know. The cruise game just isn't what it used to be. Once, everything was tinsel and glamour, jet setters and high rollers, playboys and loose sex, you know? And now... Richard Simmons and Kathy Lee. Besides, this was never my idea of a career. I want to return to my previous occupation. Oh. Super tanker captain. Really? Oh, yes. I'd do anything to put some real mass under me again. I just can't understand why I lost that gig on the Boning Valdez, just because we happened to run aground. Oh, like it's my fault Hazelton would rather spend the night in my cabin instead of on that drafty old bridge. Don't you get tired of spending every week with a new man, learning his fancies, his desires, his sensitivities, his erogenous zones, learning to please him? Perhaps I don't understand the question. What exactly are you trying to say? So, uh, what do you say? A little game of drop the anchor? You and me, stem to stern, tug and tanker? God, Larry, you're pathetic. How'd you ever get past the Love Master 2000? Cheat? Was that a no? So, uh, what do you say? Uh, God, Larry, was that a no? Okay, everybody, break. Five minutes. Doing that will get you nowhere. But I thought you just automatically had sex with every guy who won your contest. Yeah, I did. Until now. Perhaps it's time for a change. I don't know anything at all about that. Oh, yeah? You don't need to... But how can you change the... After seeing you...
I don't know anything at all. There's no need to guess, Laffer. I'll tell you exactly what to do. That's what I do best. That looks like ship's property. How did you obtain that? Oh, I, I, I think I bought it at our last port of call. Oh, well, okay. But don't let me see it again. You know, Cappy, I just might be the boy who makes your dreams come true. Oh, this is doubtful. Extremely doubtful. What would you say if I told you I recently came into a significant position in a major shipping line? I'd say we were both dreaming. Well, dream no more, sweet cakes. Let me whip this out. God, how crude. Yep, crude it is. Crude oil shipping. Well, I'll be damned. Does this say what I think it says? That you're... Nothing less than the proud new majority shareholder of Bone Code Transportation. Only the number one crude oil shipper in all the world. This changes everything. Sure does. But operating the world's largest fleet of super tankers is so demanding. The environmental groups, the regulators, the constant turnover when captains strike major continents. Turnover can be a... Good thing. Well, I am looking for someone to fill a position directly under me. Mm-hmm. Oh, Larry. Oh. Although I just love opera, how about we listen to some of my music? Oh, baby. You're the greatest. This has got to be the best night of my life! Put on these handcuffs, Laffer! Celebrate! Celebrate! Come on! Let's celebrate! Bam for party!